All right, it's Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, getting you set for the 2019 campaign at USC. That's what we do right here. We got uh, Matt Lowry on the line from Conquest Chronicles. You can join him right there and the rest of the staff on SB Nation covering USC football. Matt, how's it going today? Going pretty good. Thanks. Just happy that we're we're two weeks away from the season, actually. So I'm pretty ex- well, actually, no, a week, a few days away from the season. Sure. We're getting right there. We are definitely getting right there a couple weeks for USC. All right. So uh, you had this fall showcase uh, where the Trojans hit the field. Uh, The media got to see uh, action. Uh, Anything uh, that necessarily stood out this weekend to you? Well, the one thing that really stood out to me, and I think to everybody, was the wide receivers, the performance of the wide receivers, actually. And the reason why is because of the plays that they were making. Um, you could see just how how explosive they were in the new offense. And it's very telling because everybody believes or everybody says that USC has one of the best wide receiving cores in the country. So they it was on full display. Um, it was on full display yesterday. It was amazing to see. Um, just to see how the the plays that the um, that the receivers were making, and also another thing that stood out to me was the quarterback competition as well. It just showed that if you're if they're looking to name a starter or look for somebody to separate themselves from the pack, really it hasn't happened, and I don't think it happened since spring practice really. So it's really been pretty stagnant. So, Matt, this is a situation where you've got outstanding talent, but there are all sorts of question marks on both sides of the ball. There are players that are going to be forced into duty. Uh, Secondary comes to mind that may not necessarily be ready for it, but they're going to have to step up and play. Uh, As you look over uh, the last three weeks, uh, while the Trojans have been in camp, based on what you've been able to gather, what what makes you feel better about this USC team or make to you maybe a little bit more concerned what has stood out to you well the intensity and the competition was something that really stood out to me um with camp and just basically just seeing all of that uh last year you could tell really it was just no real competition or intensity it was just people were complacent now there's a little bit of an edge there's a little bit more intensity to the team and i think that'll carry going into the season because this team really wants to they they really want to make a, an impact they really want to prove people wrong and they're ready to get to do whatever they need to do um again i i go back to the offense as well i think the offense is going to um it, they're going to put points up I think they're going to make plays. Um, I, I I think with the passing game, especially with the air raid, it's in a it's in a good place. It's in great shape, and I think that'll be USC's bread and butter, especially how the way they simplify things. But one thing that makes me uneasy on that side of the ball is the the run game. I I don't know what it is with the running game right now, but I felt I feel like they're trying to force it. And it's just been okay. It's just been okay so far with plays here and there. But I'm interested to see how they really fix that. And they have to have a run game in order for their offense to really get going. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Trojans. Uh, We're happy to be joined by Matt Lowry. He joins us on a regular basis to break down USC football. You can join Matt and the rest of the staff there at SB Nation's Conquest Chronicles. Looking forward to USC taking on Fresno State in a couple weeks. Matt, uh, when you look at fall camp, when you look at uh, what you gathered in the spring, are there a couple guys that stand out for you that uh, either you're thinking, okay, man, nobody knows about this guy in particular, but man, I think he's going to break out or maybe a guy that uh, is going to be forced uh, into the lineup that uh, is going to have to shine? Well, I have two players uh, in particular. One I've been high on since last year. And um, another who really had a breakout during the spring. Well, actually, three, actually. But um, one of them is Elijah Griffin. Everyone knows he missed spring camp because he had shoulder surgery. He had uh, surgery on both of his shoulders, actually. And through fall camp, he's just been the best player on the field. 
I mean, he's been grabbing interceptions left and right. He, I, I think he has two pick sixes in, in fall camp. And I think he's a guy who will who is going to solidify his spot starting on the um, at one spot at, at the cornerback position. Now, the other side is going to be a toss up on who it's going to be. But I think Elijah Griffin pretty much got that spot down after uh, his performance during fall camp. Another is a um, is a true freshman, Manure McLean. A lot of people don't know about him. He was a three star coming in this season into uh, this year's recruiting class. Uh, his brother Abdul Malik McLean is, is currently on the roster as well. But um, Manure just he's just been doing things just that you don't expect six four players to do. I mean, using his 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 length, his athleticism to his advantage, but he's making plays in space, something that you really don't see. And the coaching staff has been very high on him, saying that he's going to see playing time. Now, that is with his performance in fall in uh, fall camp, on top of the depth that USC have at the wide receiving position because of Brew McCoy status and. Um, and with, with Kyle Ford also not yet being cleared for full contact yet. But Manure McClain, he's been uh, he's been a guy that that stepped up, as well as Devin Williams through the spring and fall. He's really been standing out at, at the wide receiving position. He's going to be somebody who many fans are not going to really think of like that, but he's going to be that guy where he steps up in a game and he makes plays and opposing offensive coordinator or uh, excuse me, opposing defensive coordinators are going to go, where did this guy come from? 